टुडे आई विल टॉक अबाउट मेडिकल इथिक्स एज एप्लीकेबल इन लेबोरेटरी मेडिसिन डूइंग गुड एंड नॉट डूइंग हार्म इज अस ऑफ मेडिकल इथिक्स एंड वी शुड एक्सरसाइज अवर प्रोफेशनल स्किल्स इन एन इथिकल एंड लीगल मैनर the general principles of ethics uh, medical ethics are derived from hippocratic oath and modern version of medical ethics is from geneva declaration the essential principle remain the same that is the patient interest regarding patient interest there are uh, these terms one is first one is autonomy autonomy is right of patient to make decision on their own behalf we should not force our decisions on patient patient uh, should decide on their own what kind of treatment uh, they they need we can counsel them we can educate them then the second term is beneficence that is the duty or obligation to act in the best interest of patient then non maleficence the duty or obligation to avoid harm to the patient so patient safety should be our uh, concern then justice that is fairness and giving what is rightfully due to our patient and the last term is privacy and uh, 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 it is regarded as fifth principle so uh, we uh, as a medical laboratory managers or practitioners we have responsibilities toward uh, three main group of people first one is of course patient then our colleagues and uh, our uh, fellow professionals and uh, we should uh, uphold the dignity and respect uh, our colleagues and uh, fellow professionals then uh, uh, we have responsibility towards society and the uh, uh, important example here is biomedical waste management uh, then about collection of information we should collect sufficient information from patient which help in identification of the patient number 1 number 2 we need to uh obtain clinical information from the patient so that we can uh treat the patient we can interpret the test result for the patient and we need to obtain information so that the uh, other patients and our colleagues are safe for 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 the safety of our colleagues and patients we need to obtain information and finally we need we can obtain information for billing purpose and resource management we should not obtain extra information from the patient we should obtain just sufficient information from our patient collection of specimen uh, we actually need consent from patient for collection of specimen and uh, forcing someone to undergo medical testing of any kind is an invasion of privacy and violations of human rights so we cannot force anyone to undergo medical testing however for routine laboratory test consent can be inferred that is uh, the uh, implied consent when patient present himself or herself at a laboratory with a request form and willingly submit for collection of blood sample then the consent is implied we need not need explicit consent for the same and for inpatient it is important that the inpatients patients which are admitted in the hospital they uh, they should be given opportunity to refuse for medical testing of course after uh, counseling and educating the patient then there are certain special procedures which are more or less invasive procedures and those for those pr- procedures uh, we need uh, to explain uh, our patients 
uh, that is inform our patients and we obtain the informed written consent so for the procedures when there is likelihood of complications emergency situations are special situations and uh, in those situ emergency situations some of the emergency situations consent might not be possible and under those circumstances it is acceptable to carry out necessary procedures in the patient's best interest so this is the special situation regarding performance of test the test should be uh, performed by a professional organization and uh, uh, by skill skilled and competent uh, health professionals reporting of results the test results of the patient are confidential they can be disclosed only to the patient or to the referring clinician and the report should be uh, released in a timely manner uh, especially the critical reports then uh, the uh, patient information and the test results these generate records in the laboratory so uh, about storage and retention of medical record uh, the records should be stored uh, with a reasonable safeguard against loss unauthorized access tampering or the misuse the test results must never be altered or corrected except by the authorized person and for the defined uh, reason and for how long you need to retain the records uh, the, uh, the laboratory may decide their own protocol however there are guidelines which are there uh, as per the uh, Uh, the competent organizations like nabl for india there are guidelines to for how long to retain the records uh then about financial arrangements medical laboratory should not enter into financial arrangements with referring practitioners sometimes some certain laboratories they uh, they uh, tie up with referring practitioners uh, so uh, for Uh, referring uh, test in the laboratory uh, for some financial uh, compensation to the referring practitioner and that is absolutely unethical and moreover the room used for primary sample collection should be completely independent and separate from referring practitioner's room we we should not uh, as a laboratory manager we should not uh, do phlebotomy in the referring practitioner's room that is uh, more or less unethical and uh, in my experience it is somehow related to financial arrangement with the referring practitioners confidentiality is commonly applied to conversations between doctor and patient doctor and patient relation is a privileged relation and uh, information about uh, the patient uh, condition and the information revealed by the patient should remain confidential and uh, moreover there are legal protections uh, that prevent physician from revealing their discussion with patient even under uh, oath in co court so court uh, cannot uh, force a, a physician to reveal the confidential information about patient unless and until it is uh, for the benefit of community or for the uh, interest of large group of people then ethical aspects related to special procedures i will discuss about autopsies transfusion medicine research and hiv testing there are two kind of autopsies uh, the pathological autopsies and medical legal autopsies and uh, the hospital and forensic pathology institutions uh, which perform autopsy should have adequate facilities uh, to advise to counsel and to support the relative of the disease person the body of the disease person must be handled with respect and uh, consent is must and uh, informed consent is required from the uh, next of kin of the disease person then ethical aspects regarding transfusion medicine uh, blood donation should be voluntary and without expectation of patient no pressure should be exerted on potential donors and blood should be collected under supervision of physician and the donor details should remain confidential 
uh, with regard to recipients, uh, they should be provided with reliable information regarding risk and benefits of blood transfusion. And the quality assurance is paramount throughout all the stages of blood transfusion. Ethical aspects regarding research. Ethics play a vital role in biomedical research to prevent potential harm. So some of the research procedures, they, they, may, have, they may harm uh, patient uh, potentially. They may have, ha harm the, some of the patient. There may be a risk to some of the patient. And uh, that should be prevented. And proper consent uh, should be uh, obtained from the participants for any research trial. Uh, HIV testing is a special case and should be performed on persons uh, who are informed of implications of positive result. That is, they should undergo pre-test counseling. And after HIV testing, they should, uh, there should be a post-test counseling. And uh, the test results are, of course, confidential. And uh, so this was uh, about ethics in uh, medical laboratory practice.